Welcome back to Forging Futures. I'm your host, Stanton, and this is a really big bearing. So, I was on Facebook the other day, and one of the knife making groups I'm in, some guys were talking about how bearings make great knife making material because 87.54% of the time they're made from 5200 steel, which is pretty accurate because if you look on Google, it'll tell you that uh, 52100 was designed back in like 1904 specifically for bearings. So that checks out. Now, what makes a good steel for bearings? Or, well, for bearings and for knife making? According to the internet, which is hardly ever wrong, right? It's got a lot of carbon in it. A little bit more carbon than usual makes it extra spicy. And it's got a little bit of chromium in it to lock in that always fresh flavor. These two properties make it extra hard and resilient. According to the internet. So, after reading all that, I got to thinking, I remember having a big bearing. I don't know where it came from, but I know I've had it. I just couldn't remember where it was. But after literally digging around in the scrap pile, I found it. Only it's uh, a little less shiny than I remember. <laughs> sure it's fine. Anyway, so today's goal, get this bearing cut up, get the races cut out so that I can get to the yummy chewy goodness on the inside and uh, I'm going to start making a knife out of this. Theoretically. Hopefully. Probably. Let's go with that. So, this is probably going to take me a minute. Um, yep. See you in about three months. Cue the time lapse. And right here, that is the uh, creamy caramel center that we were looking for. I was really hoping that uh, these bearings were less barrel shaped and more like long cylinder shaped. Like something like that. But, uh, you know, one solid mass about like this would have been a lot easier to work with than these two smaller ones. I don't know if I'm going to need to forge weld these together in order to get enough material to make anything or if I just need to cut off a section of this outer bearing race. Uh, I think it should all be the same material. It wouldn't make sense to me to make the outer race out of something softer than the, the, uh, the bearings so that would be silly but yeah, um, bet you didn't think you would see this today, did you? I'm going to finish cutting this one up and get these out of here and probably go ahead and 
cut off a sliver of this so that I've got two different things to work with. I may go ahead, I'm gonna see how much material one of these will make. Um, try to get a knife out of one of these, cut off a section of this, make a knife out of that. And I may even attempt to forge weld these. I don't know how well 52100 welds, but I'm gonna find out. At this point, you're probably wondering, all right, Stanton, you got the thing all cut up. Now what's the game plan? What are you gonna make? As far as the plan, I have no plan. I'm gonna throw a couple of these in the fire, hit them with a hammer and see what I get. That worked well. And I'm getting ready to keep forging on my uh, 52100 bearings that I started on yesterday. I went and welded these two that I started on. So I started on these two yesterday. And uh, man, it was really hard to hold on to them being so small. <clears throat> so I welded these rebar sticks onto them. So that I don't have to keep messing with them with the pliers and everything. I've gone with two. I've gone two different routes. This one I went with more of a trying to beat into a piece of flat stock, and this one I went square to see if there's any difference in in the process in which it moves. One thing I'm worried about is, if you see right here, you see how the sides are starting to smush in together? That's called a fish mouth. And if you, if it goes long enough, that will actually, those two sides will try to pinch together like that and they won't meet. You'll have to cut that off. Um, so, I read online that it would actually be better to start the, uh, squaring process on the side like this so that this rounded barrel side is what becomes the end and that can't fish mouth so i went ahead and welded up this third one and uh i don't know if i'll do all three at once tonight working three billets at once is uh, pretty tiresome but We'll see how it goes. quick I want to talk about these two billets that I started so I you gonna tell one I started off with a rectangle shape and the other one a square shape just as an experiment to see how they they moved like I mentioned earlier I think square is definitely the way to go by the time I get it drawn out uh, with the 
type of knife that I want to make, I think that's going to be ideal. This, the rectangle, I'm going to have to flatten and then draw out and then make basically square again anyway. So it's just twice the work. So I'm going to go ahead and set that one aside. But this one, if you can see right there, see that diamond shape, the way the edges are starting to roll in? That's going to fish mouth as I get it closer. And I could probably salvage that by uh, grinding or cutting that off once I get it down the shape. But these are already so small. I'm just going to go ahead and go to my other one uh, with the bearing welded on sideways so that as I squared, I've got the rounded end, uh, the round shape on the end. And I think that will prevent that fish mouthing from happening. At least that's what I hope. So I'm going to go ahead and set these aside and just focus on that one uh, billet for now. Another thing I'm doing with this, uh, this particular billet, the third one, that I wasn't doing quite as much with the first ones is I'm working it, I'm keeping it at a much higher temperature. I'm trying to keep it in that yellow range and once it comes down to orange, I'm putting it back in the fire. I'm moving a little bit less material in each heat, but um, keeping the temperature high, which from what I read about 52100 should keep it from uh, keep the stress down and and not let it cr crack uh, potentially 52100 is a really tough steel and if you let it if you try to work it when it's too cold it will crack um, and I don't want to put all this work in for it to crack again so I'm gonna be diligent about keeping it nice and hot Here's the results of tonight's progress. I've successfully turned a about a one inch by one inch steel uh, a 52100 bearing into a uh, about a five five inch long by half inch by half inch square stock of 52100. And this is the one that I, I welded on the side so that the the round edge uh, was on the end and when I squared it up and drew it out it did not fish mouth that's that's where I had the uh, rebar welded to it for a handle and it eventually broke that's the thing with uh, welding these work handles onto them 
it's mild steel and the constant heating uh, getting it up to 15 1600 degrees hitting it bending it it eventually breaks off it's just that steel can't hold up to it but it served its purpose and made it so much easier to handle got it down to a size where I could handle it with my half inch tongs which you can see fit perfectly now so now the plan is well tonight the plan is to go eat dinner and relax because I am tired and wore out tell you what this stuff is tough and it moves really slowly although now that I've got it to this size and shape it moves a lot easier and it's not nearly as bad to work with but now it's time to really start thinking about my dimensions and the knife that I want to make which I've got a pretty good idea and I'll show that to you shortly but tonight or for now it's I'm done for tonight it's time to rest Yeah, 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 yeah. Chop, 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 chop.